Welcome to our review on Group 1, the alkali metals. So the first thing that we need to know is where we're actually going to find them on the periodic table. So remember in your exam you get a copy of the periodic table on your chemistry data sheet and the alkali metals are found right on the far left hand side, the first column there. So alkali metals, Group 1, the first column on the far left of our periodic table. What we need to remember is that one of the key features about them is that they're very reactive with both oxygen and water. So in order to prevent them from reacting with the oxygen and the water we find in the air, we actually store them in oil to prevent those coming into contact with our metals. So when we're thinking about some of the typical properties that we're going to find with our alkali metals, firstly, they're going to be shiny when we freshly cut them. Secondly, they're good conductors of electricity. And finally, they're solid at room temperature. When we're considering some of these groups on the periodic table, we do need to remember a couple of these trends or patterns. So with our alkali metals, as we go down the group, so from lithium through sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, down to francium, then what we actually find is they get softer, so they're easier to cut. And you probably saw that in the demonstration that your teacher hopefully did for you. Their density will increase and their melting point will decrease. So hopefully in class, what you actually saw was a demonstration of three of the alkali metals being dropped into a bowl of water. So you should have seen lithium, sodium and potassium. Just in case you didn't, a little recap for you on what you would have seen. When we put lithium into water, what happens is it just fizzes very slowly on the surface. With our sodium, it turns into a molten ball, so it turns into a liquid basically on the surface, moves around really quickly and fizzes quite a lot. And then finally, the potassium, that one actually bursts into fire, so that burns with that lilac flame. And then it's going to move really quickly on the surface, fizzing lots, and has the potential to explode as well. So what we can see from those is that the reactivity is increasing as we go down. So from lithium, the lowest reactivity, down to potassium, the highest reactivity of the ones we've seen. One of the key things we need to be able to do here is write both the word and balance symbol equations for the reaction of our alkali metals with water. So at the top, I've given you the general word equation. So rather than actually naming the specific metal, we just use the word metal. So metal plus water makes the metal hydroxide and hydrogen. If we substitute in the name for our actual metal, so we use lithium as our example here. So lithium plus water makes lithium hydroxide plus hydrogen. Remember, if on the exam they ask you to write a word equation, then you've got to write the whole name or the whole word. Don't get lazy and put the actual chemical symbols for things you know because it's quicker. Make sure you write the full words, otherwise you're throwing away marks. Second part of that is to be able to write the balanced symbol equation. So remember, you do get a periodic table in the exam, so you can look up any symbol of the elements. So Na, which is our sodium, plus water, H2O, makes sodium hydroxide, NaOH, plus hydrogen, which is H2. Don't forget the little two in that subscript position for our hydrogen. Otherwise, your balancing is going to go horribly wrong every time. In order to balance it, then we need to put a two in front of our sodium, water and our sodium hydroxide in that case. Now, the good news for those of you who absolutely hate balancing equations and just can't work out how to do it. You can just learn this. Two's in front of everything except for hydrogen when you are doing any of the alkali metals. It doesn't matter which one they give you, always the same pattern. Two in front of your metal, two in front of the water, two in front of the metal hydroxide, and then just your hydrogen as H2. You've also got the state symbols in there, so S for a solid, L for our liquid of water, AQ is the aqueous solution, and then the G for the gas of hydrogen. The last thing we really need to consider is how we can explain this trend or pattern in our reactivity. And what we actually find is the reason that our group one elements are all going to react in a similar way to one another is because they've all got one electron in their outer shell. Because hopefully we remember anything in group one has one electron in the outer shell. 
Now, what we find is, as we said, the reactivity is going to increase as you go down that group. The reason for that is that as we go further down the group, we've got more shells or orbitals with the electrons in there. And that means that that outer shell electron, the one on its own that's going to be lost, is further from the nucleus. So that means the force of attraction holding that electron into place is weaker the further away it is. So the further down the group we go, the weaker that force of attraction holding the electron in the outer shell, therefore it's lost more easily, making it more reactive. Hopefully at the end of this video you can now recall some of the physical and chemical properties of our group 1 elements. You can explain the reactions of group 1 elements including word and symbol equations and you can predict properties from given trends.